you know, like for example, I don't impulse buy anything, although it looks like I do. You have to understand, I, I thought about this guitar for two years before I bought it. And that guitar, you know, I thought about for at least eight months before I bought it. Um, they weren't in stock when I, when I first saw them, but, it, you know, I played process of elimination. I tried a couple of, you know, not a lot of seven strings, whatever. Uh, but I knew that because I enjoyed this guitar so much, I, I would really enjoy that guitar. And, and it, trust me, when you see the review on that one, it doesn't disappoint. You can see lots of footage of that guitar on this channel and this one too. And you're going to see a lot more. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the credit card thing, yes, it's a dangerous tool to use, but it is a tool. And again, if you don't have your expenses sorted out first, you basically base what you're going to buy on uh, those minimum monthly payments. And I haven't quite figured out how they calculate the minimum monthly payment uh, for the credit card because it's not just as simple as it's so much percentage of whatever. It, it, it's kind of weird. So like, for example, my max on my credit card is $7,500. So I would like to know what the minimum payment, like let's say the minimum payment on a $7,500 is 500, uh, right? And then the interest of that is a hundred or two, you know, a hundred or $200, right? That is something you have to really consider. You know, maybe, you know, if you're paying that much interest, is it worth it? Probably not. Because you, at the end of the day, you have to accept the fact that you will be paying more than what these guitars, if you were to just buy them outright with taxes and all, and even shipping. Uh, in my case, the shipping was free, but you are going to pay more for them. Uh, for example, my Gibson SG3, I figured that guitar was 1560 bucks, plus tax came out to about 1800 By the time I was done with interest, I was at about twenty-one or $2,200 on that guitar. Uh, but I was making, you know, I wasn't making as big a payments as I should have. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that credit card was a much higher uh, interest rate. So you got to be aware of all this. Uh, so, you you're, you know, the, the trade-off here is you get what you want, but you're going to pay a little more for it. So just understand that. Because uh, a lot of people, that's, you know, like a lot of people, I know the comments is just going to be full of people saying credit cards are a bad idea, bad idea, bad idea. And I get that, but they're an option. And yes, they are a bad idea if you're not responsible. If you're not a responsible person, you shouldn't have a credit card. Um, I maybe make one or two purchases on the credit card a year. That's it. Uh, and it's usually these things. That's what I got it for was just, it was the only way I was going to be able to upgrade in a reasonable amount of time. Like buying something and paying it off, uh, even if I pay a little bit more, is a lot easier than trying to save up for something. Uh, we just live in an era where you kind of can't get away with that anymore. Where when I was a kid, I bought everything cash. You know, the massive boogie I saved up for, but it took me three years as a teenager to, <laughs> you know, I was 15 years old when I bought that massive boogie, right? And uh, that was a $1,500 item, but I bought it cash and it was mine. Uh, no debt. So these things, they're still debt. Uh, but that debt is basically, if you want to think about it, it's four instruments that I paid off uh, in the last past year. These are the last two that I'm paying off right now. Again, uh, I'm going to be below $2,000 on my credit card. Uh, I'm at 2400 right now, but I'm going to put 500 on it because I, again, I did really well last month and it, you know, helped me out even more this month. And then, you know, with the ad revenue that's slowly coming in, that's, that's another thing I got to tell you about these guitars is they are now very little bit, but I can't tell you exactly how much they made, but the... I made enough to pass the threshold for the first payment for my AdSense. So over time, these things are going to earn their keep back, you know, especially if I get gigging with them and stuff like that. But, you know, even if not, I mean, while I'm sleeping, they are earning me a very little amount of money. And that's kind of cool too. So I do have a plan for these things, but even if they didn't make me a cent, I wouldn't care. Uh, you know, I'm going to have probably have these guitars for a long, long time. Well, it's hard to say, you never know. Uh, you know, somebody makes you the right offer and it's, you know, more than what you paid for them. Yeah, sure. You might sell them, you know what I mean? But if not, you just hang on to them and tell they're worth more. You know what I mean? Like my Gibsons are worth now, my SG61 reissue and my SG3 are worth way more than what I paid for them new, uh, just because you can't get them anymore. You know, so 
a collector comes up to me and says, here, I'll give you this ridiculous amount of money for those just because I want them. I might say yes. You know what I mean? So, uh, and then I'd take that money and, you know, pay these two off and put the rest towards the drum kit or whatever. And then once that was paid off, I'll buy something else. So that's how I plan on building like my studio and stuff like that. But I do plan on selling a lot of stuff too. And I, again, I'm very picky about what I buy. Uh, I don't like to buy things and not use them and just have them sitting there. Uh, and I also understand when you're buying the same thing over and over again, which, you know, let's face it, uh, it most electric guitars, if you buy one or you buy the other, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, the seven string to a six string makes a difference because you've got the extra string there and the, the different scale length. So that's a different guitar. But, you know, 25 and all my 25 and a half inch scale guitars, you know, one to the next is not really that big of a difference. You know what I mean? It's just which one you prefer more. Uh, you know, things like that you have to consider. So anyway, yeah, you guys, uh, if you are thinking about going the credit card route to uh, get, you know, musical equipment, it is a bad idea initially because of the amount of responsibility you have to uh you know the maturity and 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 you have to be very very careful not getting in over your head because it's easy to run up your credit card to an insane amount uh like for me i know i'm safe up to about 3600 bucks i can make those payments every time they're going to be way below 200 dollars. and like again just paying 200 dollars, it comes down more each month. Uh, like I say right now, if I pay $200, it's, it's, it's the minimum payment plus an extra 80 bucks lower. So, you know, you save the interest and whatever. Uh, so again, be very careful with them, uh, cause they, they can get you into a lot of trouble, you know, and you don't want to end up in the debt collection and stuff like that. Um, you got to plan things ahead. Uh, even if you take a couple of months before you do the purchase and if you miss the purchase, like say, uh, uh, like this model's discontinued, that model's, I think, discontinued. You can't get them anymore uh, unless you find them used, right? And you don't have to buy everything new either, right? Um, I tend to like to buy new because things go used for a reason. Usually when you're buying something used, it's usually going to need money or there's something inherently wrong with it. And I just don't want to deal with that. I like having the warranty. So, um yeah, so just be really careful about it if you are going to go that route. Uh, because, again, it's very easy to be impulsive. Uh, never carry a credit card on you, ever, unless you're making a specific purchase. Because it's too easy just to pull the thing out and swipe it. You know what I mean? That's, oh, well, it's only an extra 5 bucks. It's only an extra 20 bucks. It's only an extra 80 bucks. And then next thing you know, you're several thousand dollars in debt, right? And there's a, like story after story on this. So for me, my credit card never, it, 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 it stays at home. You know, if my car breaks down, I don't have a credit card with me. You know, it, it's just, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pay the invoice later. You know what I mean? Um, I don't take credit cards to restaurants. I don't, you know, you know what I mean? You just don't do that. Uh, I have a very specific plan for my credit card and it's basically to build my studio, to build my instrument arsenal and uh, keep the debt at a manageable level that does not uh, hurt my, um, you know, ability to live normal. You know what I mean? So there's that. And again, just, you know, whatever you're thinking of buying, just think about it for a while before you buy it. Like I say, over like God off a long time, year, two years, I, I, I pondered on this guitar waiting for it to come in stock. And even when it was in stock, I, I still looked at it for three or four months before I said, okay, yeah, I'm going to do it. Um, this one, you know, six, eight months, whatever it was, uh, I thought about it before I bought it and I bought, but I ended up buying this one and this one. So last year, these were the two big guitars plus the bass. That's the only three things. Oh, and I put some, you know, like another two or $300 of Christmas gifts, uh, you know, this year on the credit card, but that wasn't, you know, that wasn't a, a big deal. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, you know, think about your purchases, plan your purchases out. Like, you know, how, like if you can find out exactly 
the max of your credit card and what the ma minimum monthly payment is on the max of that credit card and then look at your finances to see if you could swing that uh you know and you know the the only way the way i look at it is whatever your disposal if if you have disposable income but let's say you have like a hundred dollars left over at the end of every month that means your minimum mon monthly payment shouldn't be more than 50 bucks you know so you can at least double it right that way you pay it down faster so in my case 200 i usually end up most months with about 300 dollars ahead on top of putting money uh you know like for example i most of my monthly expenses come up to about 600 dollars. okay so i'll put 700 away so every six months i get an extra month ahead you know what i mean it, it takes a long time to do that and it, if i get a little bit luckier I'll put 200 extra ahead. So that comes first before the, and then after that, it's the credit card stuff, right? So, yeah, so uh, so hopefully that, you know, can give you a little bit of advice on doing that. It is, an like I say, it is an inherently bad idea to go in debt for instruments because, you know, these are luxury items, but it is a great way to be able to get them because it's an option that, you know, if you can find a way to swing it, uh, it does make it manageable. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. Uh, you guys tell me what you think and, uh, you know, there's no swaying me and, uh, you know, whatever, because, uh, you know, I'm already in it and I'm already doing it. And yes, I'm going to, that's how I'm going to get my drum kit and stuff like that. And even if I have to piece it together over a period of a couple of years, you know, maybe I rent some stuff and just, you know, okay, well, I'll rent this for a while and then I'll buy this, I'll buy this separate, I'll buy this separate, buy this separate. Uh, that's another way to do it too. It just takes a little longer. Uh, but I'm going to see what I can get away with. Anyway, there we go. Have yourselves a great day.